Topping today's news, the Commissioner of Police confirms international partners will assist with the investigation into the head of CID corruption allegations. Operation Ceasefire results in police finding 15 guns, 1,500 rounds of ammunition in southeast New Providence this morning, and the Bahamas men's national basketball team losing to Spain by eight points in the final game of the Paris Olympic qualifiers. <laughs> Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jorino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News, and it is a pleasure to have you join us. During the House of Assembly proceedings this morning, leader of the official opposition, Michael Pintard, called on the government to at least make a communication to members of the House on the disturbing allegations levied against Chief Superintendent of Police, Michael Johnson, the officer in charge of the Criminal Investigations Department, and the subsequent investigation, and being placed on leave as well. We on this side had hoped that the government would have come today with at least a communication on the uh, explosive discussions that are going on in the public domain with respect to the circulation of voice notes uh, that have the potential to cause reputational damage both locally and internationally for an agency that is so important uh, to our peace and security and the proper administration of law, laws in the Bahamas. At a minimum, we would have expected that the the Prime Minister himself, uh, since we know that in the Constitution something at this level supersedes the, the Minister of National Security, we would, we would have hoped that the, the Prime Minister himself would have made a communication. The Minister of National Security, Wayne Monroe, sought to remind Mr. Pintar that there is a legal process that is already underway and that the government does not want to interfere with the police investigation. Point of order, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I know of no such constitutional provision. The only constitutional provision preserves for the Commissioner of Police autonomy. The public should be should be aware the Commissioner of Police is holding a meeting and briefing with the press from 11 a.m. was the indication. The other side has had two politicians judicially condemned for interfering with the police. They still don't seem to grasp that the police are supposed to be separate from politics. Despite this point of order by the National Security Minister, Mr. Pintard persisted that there should have been at least a communication on the matter, which has implications for the entire country. Deputy Prime Minister Chester Cooper, however, then sought to encourage the opposition to let the police investigation take its course. The leader of the opposition does have a right to request information and statements and clarification he has no right to tell us who ought to make those communications mr deputy the minister for national security has made it clear that it's a matter for the police and the police is making a statement so he talks about not undermining institutions uh, and clearly as a responsible leader of the, of the opposition uh, I, I ask that he not undermine institutions and take the advice of uh, the minister for national security casey on this matter uh, and listen to the release by the police. The opposition is also calling on the police to engage Scotland Yard or the FBI to assist with the investigation of the high-ranking police officer. In lieu of that, they're calling for a commission of inquiry. Well, the Commissioner of Police, Clayton Fernander, did indeed hold that press conference today to address the controversial matter. He says investigations are underway into the allegations against the head of the CID, Chief Superintendent Michael Johnson, once again alleged to be involved with known criminals in a bribery scheme. The circulating voice notes implicate the CID chief allegedly discussing monetary payments in exchange for the removal of wanted posters of individuals wanted by police for questioning in serious crimes. The voice notes led to public outrage and Superintendent Johnson has since been relieved of his duties and replaced or placed on garden leave and replaced by Superintendent Antoine Ramming. Giving insight into what the public can expect, Commissioner Fernanda describes the matter as being painful for the force. We have heard the recordings of phone calls, phone calls on social media, recordings. Investigation are already on the way to determine, to determine the reliability 
understand when, where, and by whom they were made. Identify all voices and explore clues in the surrounding sounds. A team has been assembled to lead investigations into this matter, and according to Commissioner Police Clayton Fernander, they are seeking the help from foreign officials to ensure a thorough, independent investigation that citizens can trust. A selected team from the Security and Intelligence Branch has been assembled to lead this investigation. The existing independent inspectorate board will be involved in a supervisory role. We are in communication with international partners in the UK and the US who have indicated their willingness to support us, ensuring the investigation is independent impartial and fair. Unable to indicate exactly which international partners will be assisting, he says officers will be making a final decision by the end of today. The commissioner says answers in this case will not come overnight, but investigations will be vigorous and that the case will not be swept under the rug. Also on the crime front, as the government and law enforcement agencies continue to try and stop guns being entered into the country, or smuggled into the country, it is evident that they have a monumental task on their hands as gun violence continues to wreak havoc on the quality of life here in the Bahamas. Fifteen firearms, including four assault rifles, nine pistols, one revolver, one shotgun, along with an estimated 1,500 rounds of assorted ammunition were confiscated by officers from Operation Ceasefire just this morning around 7 a.m. Officers acting on information proceeded to a track road in the area of Rose Road off Hannah Road where they discovered and confiscated the cache of firearms and ammunition. There have been no arrests made in connection with this incident. However, the Anti-Gang and Firearms Investigations Task Force will conduct further investigations into the incident. Police also made multiple arrests in separate firearms and ammunition seizures on Sunday. In the first incident, around 11.30 a.m., officers executed a search warrant at a home on Mays Court off Faith Avenue, where they confiscated a quantity of ammunition, resulting in the arrest of two male occupants, ages 58 and 22. In the second incident, around 2.30 p.m. on Sunday, officers executed a search warrant at a residence on McQuay Street, that's off Nassau Street, they discovered a firearm containing ammunition and marijuana, which led to the arrest of four men, ages 44, 43, 22, and 18. The building and construction statistics for 2023 were recently released, and the number of building permits issued were down in 2023. There were also fewer construction projects started, but more completed construction projects in 2023 as compared to 2022. The Bahamas National Statistics Institute released the figures, and the total number of permits issued for new construction was 1,519 for 2023, a decrease of 65 permits when compared to 2022. The total number of construction projects started in 2023 showed a decrease of 51 projects when compared to 2022, falling from 542 to 491 projects altogether. There was also a decrease in the total value of construction projects that were started in 2023 in both the residential and commercial sectors, totaling a $128 million decrease. Meanwhile, the total number of construction projects completed in 2023 was 743, an increase of 43 completed projects when compared to 2022. Despite the decrease in the value and the number of projects started construction in the country in 2023, it is said that construction is doing quite well here in the Bahamas. 
And finally, in this segment, a farewell courtesy call was held for the outgoing United States Senior Defense Attaché in the Bahamas, Captain Greg Gelman, and the Bilateral Affairs Officer, Captain Jonathan Griffin, from the U.S. Embassy. You are looking at images from that farewell meeting that was held at the Ministry of National Security on John F. Kennedy Drive. Commodore Dr. Raymond King expressed gratitude for the dedicated service of Captain Gelman and Captain Griffith over the years. Both captains have been instrumental in joint operations and have collaborated closely with the Defense Force to fight drugs, weapons, and human smuggling through the Bahamas. Both Americans spoke highly of their experience here in the Bahamas. Commodore King and his team thanked them for maintaining the partnership between the U.S. Coast Guard and the Royal Bahamas Defense Force. Incoming U.S. Senior Defense Attaché and Bilateral Affairs Officer Commander Victor Lang and Captain Charles McCurdy, respectively, they're both given a warm welcome by Commander King, and they're both expressing their eagerness to work with the Bahamian government and the Royal Bahamas Defense Force over the next few years. You're listening to JCN, You're watching us as well. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials. <laughs> 